Chapter Two of the First Christmas Tree, a story of the forest by Henry Van Dyke. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter Two: The Trail Through the Forest. Two years had passed to the day, almost to an hour, since that Christmas Eve in the cloister of Fazel. A little company of pilgrims, less than a score of men, were creeping slowly northward through the wide forest that rolled over the hills of central Germany. At the head of the band marched Winfred, clad in a tunic of fur, with his long black robe girded high about his waist, so that it might not hinder his stride. His hunter's boots were crusted with snow. Drops of ice sparkled like jewels along the thongs that bound his legs. There was no other ornament to his dress except the bishop's cross hanging on his breast and the broad silver clasp that fastened his cloak about his neck he carried a strong tall staff in his hand fashioned at the top into the form of a cross close beside him keeping step like a familiar comrade was the young prince gregor long marches through the wilderness had stretched his limbs and broadened his back and made a man of him in stature as well as spirit his jacket and cap were of wolfskin and on his shoulder he carried an axe with broad shining blade he was a mighty woodsman now and could make a spray of chips fly around him as he hewed his way through the trunk of a spruce tree behind these leaders followed a pair of teamsters guiding a rude sledge loaded with food and their equipage of camp and drawn by two big shaggy horses blowing thick clouds of steam from their frosty nostrils. Tiny icicles hung from the hairs on their lips. Their flanks were smoking. They sank well above the fret locks at every step in the soft snow. Last of all came the rear guard, armed with bows and javelins. It was no child's play in those days to cross Europe afoot. The weird woodland, somber and illimitable, covered hill and vale tableland and mountain peak there were wide moors where wolves hunted in packs as if the devil drove them and tangled thickets where the lynx and the boar made their lairs fierce bears lurked among the rocky passes and had not yet learned to fear the face of man the gloomy recesses of the forest gave shelter to inhabitants who were still more cruel and dangerous than the beast of prey outlaws and sturdy robbers and mad werewolves and bands of wandering pillagers the pilgrim who would pass from the mouth of the tabor to the mouth of the rhine must travel with a little army of retainers or else trust in god and keep his arrows loose in the quiver the travellers were surrounded by an ocean of trees so vast so full of endless billows that it seemed to be pressing on every side to overwhelm them gnarled oaks with branches twisted and knotted as if in rage rose in groves like tidal waves smooth forests of beech trees round and gray swept over the knolls and slopes of the land in a mighty ground swell but most of all the multitude of pines and firs innumerable and monotonous with straight stark trunks and branches woven together in an unbroken hood of the darkest green crowded through the valleys and over the hills rising on the highest ridges into the ragged crest like the foaming edge of breakers through this sea of shadows ran a narrow stream of shining whiteness an ancient roman road covered with snow it was as if some great ship had ploughed through the green ocean long ago and left behind it a thick smooth wake of foam along this open track the travellers held their way heavily for the drifts were deep wearily for the hard winter had driven many packs of wolves down from the moors the steps of the pilgrims were noiseless but the sledges creaked over the dry snow and the panting of the horses throbbed through the still cold air the pale blue shadows on the western side of the road grew longer the sun declining through its shallow arch dropped behind the treetops darkness followed swiftly as if it had been a bird of prey waiting for this sign to swoop down upon the world father said gregor to the leader surely this day's march is done 
it is time to rest and eat and sleep if we press onward now we cannot see our steps and will that not be against the word of the psalmist david who bids us not to put confidence in the legs of a man winfred laughed nay my son gregor he said thou hast tripped even now upon thy text for david said only i take no pleasure in the legs of a man and so say i for i am not minded to spare thy legs nor mine until we come further on our way and do what must be done this night draw the belt tighter my son and hew me out this tree that is fallen across the road for our campground is not here the youth obeyed two of the foresters sprang to help him and while the soft fir wood yielded to the stroke of the axes and the snow flew from the bending branches winfred turned and spoke to his followers in a cheerful voice that refreshed them like wine courage brothers and forward yet a little the moon will light us presently and the path is plain well know i that the journey is weary and my own heart worries also for the home in england where those i love are keeping feast this christmas eve but we have work to do before the feast to-night for this is yuletide and the heathen people of the forest have gathered at the thunder oak of gizmar to worship their god thor strange things will be seen there and deeds which make the souls black but we are sent to lighten their darkness and we will teach our kinsmen to keep a christmas with us such as the woodland has never known forward then let us stiffen up our feeble knees a murmur of assent came from the men even the horses seemed to take fresh heart they flattened their backs to draw the heavy loads and blew the frost from their nostrils as they pushed ahead the night grew broader and less oppressive a gate of brightness was open secretly somewhere in the sky higher and higher swelled the clear moon flood until it poured over the eastern wall of the forest into the road a drove of wolves howled faintly in the distance but they were receding and the sound soon died away the stars sparkled merrily through the stringent air the small round moon shone like silver little breaths of the dreaming wind wandered whispering across the pointed fir tops as the pilgrim toiled bravely onward following their clue of light through the labyrinth of darkness after a while the road began to open out a little there were spaces of meadowland fringed with alders behind which a bolsterous river ran clashing through spears of ice rude houses of hewn logs appeared in the openings each one casting a patch of inky blackness upon the snow then the travellers passed a large group of dwellings all silent and unlighted and beyond they saw a great house with many outbuildings and enclosed courtyards from which the hounds bayed furiously and a noise of stomping horses came from the stalls but there was no other sound of life the fields around lay bare to the moon they saw no man except that once on a path that skirted the further edge of the meadow three dark figures passed by running very swiftly then the road plunged again into the dense thicket traversed it and climbing to the left emerged suddenly upon a glade round and level except at the northern side where a swelling hillock was crowned with a huge oak tree it towered above the heath a giant with contorted arms beckoning to the host of lesser trees here cried winfred his eyes flashed and his hand lifted his heavy staff here is the thunder oak and here the cross of christ shall break the hammer of the false god thor End of chapter two recording by penny ann